What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Trucker's Life. If you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel. If you've already been subscribed, welcome back, guys. And today we're doing something a little bit different. I know I say that a lot, but <laughs> we're doing something that we... Actually, I've never done... Uh, at this company here, I've never done this. And uh, it's going to start with a bad bad day. Well, not. let's take that back. Not a bad day. We can't, don't start that bad juju. Just make it... <laughs> <laughs> you yourself uh, set yourself up for failure. No, no, it's the weather is is not great, but we're gonna be able to deal with it. And uh, fortunately and unfortunately, we're gonna no, unfortunately, we're gonna um, be unloading right out there. There's no roof, and uh, yeah, this is gonna be interesting. Probably gonna get a little wet. And I had to bring out the rain suit, but yeah, I'm doing a uh, lube, a lube uh, load, which is uh, you know like oils, uh, motor oil, stuff like that. And this is actually a compartment trailer, so I'm gonna get offloaded, and then I'll take you guys somewhere where I can show you guys exactly what a compartment trailer is. Some of you guys already know what they what they are, but then some of you guys may not. Um, and just the difference is that. It is exactly that. A compartment trailer is a trailer that has different sections within itself. So it's completely a tank. Each section is its own complete tank, sealed tank by itself. And of course, all together it completes the trailer. But um, And it looks like a regular trailer if you look at it from, from far away. It looks a lot like a fuel trailer. Um, this is the, the, the shape that the fuel trailers normally have. and. Uh, this is but but they don't use that for this they might i don't know i don't know if they use these guys anybody that hauls fuel do, are they the same trailers they look the same to me um because i know that the fuel trailers also have compartments um some of them do all right guys so we're gonna wait about the 10 15 minutes before we get out um, i'm already parked already parked i'm ready to go uh well not ready to go i gotta go out there and hook up um, but like I said, I'm going to let the rain kind of chill out a little bit more. Looks like it's about to blow over. As you can tell over there, it's about to, uh, looks like, looks like it's, it's about to blow over. So, um, I'm going to wait just a little bit. It was lighting pretty bad here a little while ago. So definitely not a good combination of trucks and lightning. Yeah. Well, not metal and lightning. Yeah. Not so good. But anyways, so a little bit, I want to talk to you guys about that, um, this truck has a, it has already a, uh, a PTO button or it's set up for the application that it's for. And they're ordered this way sometimes because they know what they're gonna be used for. This one of course is for hauling tankers, but you can also use the same application for like a dump truck to run the hydraulics on a dump truck and various other applications that you might need. This truck comes with a PTO button, which is this one right here this button right here is the pto button so what we're going to do is we're going to put the clutch in and then we're going to we're going to push the button and it'll engage the um, hydraulic pto that i have um, on my truck um, i didn't put it on here whenever you uh, lease these trucks or buy these trucks whichever way you're going to do it through the company you um they already have them set up so you, they already come with the pump with the hose rack you know with everything that you need and uh so so you won't have any problems or issues with that but like i was saying this truck's already set up with that now the pto is basically kind of like a gear that goes on your transmission and it runs a pump that in turn runs the the uh, uh well turns some gears to, to make pressure and then turns the pump i have in the back to be able to offload the product so I'll get out here right now and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about as far as the pump and the way the whole hookup is. I don't think it's gonna be an issue for me to record anything here. I'm gonna record as much as I can, um, but maybe not the total, total unloading process, but I'll record as much as I can so you guys can see a little glimpse into what we're doing and uh, see how the whole compartment trailer thing works. So I think the uh, rain's kind of chilled out already a little bit, so we're gonna go ahead and get out and uh, start getting everything prepared. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the, the PTO. Well, you know what, I'm gonna go hook up first and then I'm gonna come back and turn on the PTO pump. That way it's not, um, that way it's not uh, getting hot, you know, getting the oil hot and all that other stuff, so. Uh, but anyways, 
I don't know even know why I said that because the the oil the uh, the hydraulic pump has its fan with a radiator and it cools itself down. But anyways, just in case, I'm gonna go ahead and go out, hook up, and then come back and turn on the PTO. All right. So safety first, safety glasses, hard hat. Um, these these were actually sent to me by one of you guys, Ralph. Let me see if I can turn them on. They actually have. There, there you go. They actually have light. Cool. Love them. Uh, all right. Anyways. So let's get started here. So we're gonna start with uh, compartment number one, which uh, this is how they're they're numbered. One, two, three, four. So it's only four compartments. I said that it was more than that, and it's actually just four. So we're gonna start on three. We're gonna hook this hose up here, and that's gonna run to the top right here. And then their pump, their hose will hook up to here, and then we can uh, run it. So. Let me run that real quick and I'll show you guys what it looks like once it's already set up and we can start off. Already starting a little bit rocky this morning because he said I didn't have an appointment. Um, some other truck had an appointment, but luckily he's going to go ahead and take me, but it might be a little while. So whatever, as long as we get it done. This is what it looks like. I still gotta get some uh, tie straps to put around here. You gotta tie those up, guys. Never know if they pop off. You're gonna make a huge mess. Then there's a contraption there, set up down there. I know that bottom setup does not <laughs> look that great, but it works. And that's it. Hooked up and ready to roll. All right, guys. All right, guys. So we're hooked up, and they're. Uh, the two that they're doing one of them he's got his own pump and he's doing it on his own the other one i'm using my pump and these right here guys are what they call the internal valve so what you do is these normally go out like this and you pull these in i mean you pull these out and what it does is it opens up um it opens up on top of the trailer um a valve that way it will allow it to breathe and you can unload and not suck in the trailer which is definitely not something you want to do well I'll come around this side so i can show you guys exactly how this is hooked up over here i had to improvise guys i don't know what i do with my straps that i normally have for uh these hoses and uh so this is basically the hydraulic pump right here this right here is a hydraulic pump and there we are hooked up so this is the inlet that's the outlet right there it goes to the customer this comes from the trailer and i had to use the zip ties but they work unfortunately I had to use those up They're as expensive as they are but it is what it is it's all about uh being safe and making sure we don't make a mess but that's the hydraulic pump there guys and then i'll come around here and I'll show you guys this right here is the hydro pack which is basically the radiator and there's a fan right in there that keeps the oil cool and there's a line that comes from the transmission which I don't think we'll be able to get in there let's see if we can get in here and see no we can't we can't see it well you can hear it definitely But yeah, basically that's 
that's how we hook up sometimes we use air to offload which there's my air pump and these trucks like i said are they set them up so this would be the air hookup i'd hook up here to that and into wherever on this on the trailer this trailer doesn't seem to have a place for air and then the in transit heat is those right there these two these two right here are the in transit heat basically for those of you that don't know some of this product like on my last load for example uh it's a, it's a good example on my last load um that 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 particular product needed to be hot but it was hot enough that it didn't have to be uh, maintained by the truck and it wasn't going as far when it's a, a long load and the product is more volatile or more more susceptible to freezing or to getting hard on you you hook up those um radiator hoses basically is what it is and, it, and the trailer itself has two hookups and then on the whole bottom of the trailer there's a tray that has that runs that radiator fluid through the bottom of the trailer and basically your truck is uh your truck's antifreeze is running throughout truck and trailer at that point um now you can't just show up hook up your truck to your trailer and think you're going to leave no you have to get a pump in to be able to fill up the whole bottom of the trailer that way you don't go down the road about a quarter of a mile and you you won't even go that far and your truck decides that it doesn't want to run because it doesn't have any more antifreeze in it so what we do is at the yard we have a pump an electric pump and uh with a, with a barrel of antifreeze hook it up to the truck and then fill everything up and then that way we're ready to go but you still have to carry at least a gallon or two while you're going down the road because a few miles down the road your truck's gonna finally push out all the air and you're gonna have to top it off so always if you're gonna do in transit heat always carry a couple of gallons of antifreeze with you i do not like doing in transit heat and i'll tell you guys why uh, let me get away from the truck a little bit over here the reason i don't like doing in transit heat is mainly because some of the some of the antifreeze that's used at some of these places is not the best i guess and you're running that through your engine and you can see the problem with that so i don't like running in transit heat if i have to i will but um nine times out of ten i just won't i just won't accept the load even though it pays okay i won't accept the load because that truck is my responsibility because that's what puts um food on the table for me and for my family and you might say well refusing to load is also doing you're, you're messing up yourself but no because in the long run my truck is very important and that's what i need to keep running so that's why i don't do much in transit heat but when it really really have to do when i really have to do it hey i'll do it step up to the plate get it done but not something that i really like to do so a little bit into the life you see all the piping here on this trailer now normal trailers what i call normal trailers or smooth bore which are the ones that are just one whole product throughout the whole thing don't have all these all this piping right all this plumbing right here and all these go to the individual compartments as you can tell so let me see if i don't think you can tell from the outside where the actual compartments are are uh, divided it's just a regular weld but um but like i said normal the the, the, the smooth bores have either a discharge on the side or a discharge on the back only two ways that i've ever seen them um uh, sometimes they'll have like a, a piping where you can hook it up from the middle and it has a pipe that runs through the whole back and it comes out of the back too so you can do both um those aren't ideal when you're unloading on an incline because your product you always got to think about all this stuff you got to be as level as possible because if you if you do that style that i'm telling you where you run it from the belly back to the back and you're sitting like this on an incline well what's going to happen is that you're going to leave product back here and uh you can't can't be leaving product so those trailers we don't use them as much for that purpose but it can be done regardless and another thing a thing that i do like about these trailers right here is that they don't slosh a lot the whole trip it didn't slosh almost none um the smooth bores hold on because when you hit a stop 
or when you go to a stop sign or when you have to slam on your brakes it will come back and remind you with the force it feels like another semi running into the back of you running into your truck that's what it feels like and when you take off of course you got to do you got to you got to know how to time your gears and all that good stuff but with these here you don't have to do that all of the trailers that are used for chemicals um most of them are smooth bore your milk trailers if you got a truck that this this that's uh hauling food grade that's a smooth bore as well they don't do compartments on those because you get bacteria into in the little crevices and all that stuff and to get them cleaned is, is a nightmare so they don't use this type of trailer will never be used on food grade smooth bore will that's what they use mostly for that it's just one whole thing but yeah a little glimpse into the tanking life and uh finally i get the, the opportunity to show you guys a little bit and uh maybe you guys will like this and maybe start driving tankers i love it it's a very cool job and uh a little challenging sometimes challenging sometimes but nonetheless it's fun okay we're going out of compartment one now so we're done with uh, compartment three now at one now those are the larger ones the rear compartment is 3000 middle is two and uh, i think that looks like 1500 and 3000 in the front so those are your different sizes of compartments as well they're not all equal in size and the reason he's doing this is because he doesn't have room in his tanks so he's uh putting it in totes which are uh there's not one out here it's basically like four of these barrels together and that's what he's doing he's filling those up with compartment number two so almost done guys this stuff's pretty quick that's one of the cool things about it as well all right and that was that got that done got unloaded well just got your finish unloading so let's turn the pto off clutch in and she's good to go good to go so let's uh pull forward get everything ready to roll and uh put her in the wind all right guys one last thing i like to do before i get ready to roll is to make sure that everything is completely shut closed cut off or whatever you want to call it um this particular trailer has this it's like a little crash bar that goes here you pull this up and then you lift it up lift up the cage and that basically does not allow you to completely open this stuff up so those are completely shut these are all all going and this is, they're all the same spot i know the belly's uh shut because you can't open this uh or you can't close this door with uh with those uh um, levers out so i know that's shut everything's good there everything's shut back here which i didn't touch any of that right there and make sure that all the caps are on the on the trailer or on the truck both of the caps are on the truck so we're ready to go about to take off here in a little bit and uh get back to the yard and so this is uh a compartment trailer so those of you that have never seen a compartment trailer or know anything about them that's exactly what this guy right here is and uh hopefully you guys learned a little something if not then uh hopefully you were entertained a little bit but with that being said guys i'm gonna go ahead and put it in the wind uh get back to texas right now i'm in arkansas and pick up another one i think i have another one of these loads uh ready for me when i get back and go make some more money continue on going with the week hopefully you guys have a wonderful week and hopefully i will see you guys here pretty soon with that being said, guys, don't forget to be kind to one another. Help anybody needs help. Anybody contemplating suicide, 1-800-273-8255. Military men and women, thank you so much for your service. See you guys on the next video. Peace. Bye, dear.